Hello, my name is Rachel Dawson. I'm a second year MFA acting candidate and I am playing Hedda in Hedda Gabler. Hi, my name is Desmond Gallant and I'm the director of Hedda Gabler. Hi, my name is Amanda Gomez. I am a graduating senior and I am the assistant director for FAU's production of Hedda Gabler. Ibsen uh, was second only to Shakespeare in terms of like the body of work that he created, the subject matter that he explored. Um, but one of the most important ideas or themes that he's exploring is the idea of uh, each individual being able to sort of fully explore who they are and have a, be able to develop a genuine sense of self-fulfillment, of self-realization. Um, and Hedda is a great example of that. Hedda is a woman who was born into privilege um, and has been raised to believe that life will provide certain things for her and she's just returned from her honeymoon and she's starting to realize that life is not holding up its promises. Hedda as a female character is so powerful because she's an example of a woman who is just dissatisfied with the way that her life has turned out. She goes through this, this um, she emerges into the play in a sort of place of, you know, the word she uses a lot is boredom. But what ultimately happens is that boredom is a cause, uh, causes this ultimate sort of sense of frustration and anger in her that she cannot um, uh, sort of express herself and investigate life and come to know the world and come to know herself in any sort of full and self-fulfilling way. Hedda has these three men kind of orbiting around her. Tesman, her husband, that she's kind of settled for in a way. Um, an old love, love board, and um, this friend of hers of the same social class, Judge Brack. And she connects with each of them very differently, which I, I find really interesting and exciting. Part of that anger response that she has is directed primarily at the men because they are the reason why she is not allowed to fulfill herself. Hedda's relationship with Tesman um, is one of disappointment, I think. Uh, she's kind of settled in a way for him, and he's this academic, and they don't have a lot in common, uh, which makes um, time together very boring. Hedda's relationship with Loveborg is um, they were old flames, I guess, if you will, and I think she misses him and she lives vicariously through him in a lot of ways and I think she's jealous of this passion he has and his willingness and courage to live life very deeply. Hedda's relationship with Brack, I actually quite like the relationship because she confides in him and it's the only character that she's completely honest with in the entire play. She sees a friend in him and she also underestimates how similar they are, and his willingness to act on the capacity he has for darkness, too. <laughs> so with Eilert Loveborg, she's trying to um, exercise control over him because she feels like she has no control over her own destination, uh, her own destination, her own destiny, her own, her own life. You know, she thinks that if she can somehow guide these people or gain control somewhere, it'll give her a sense of control of her life. Um, and therefore give her some kind of sense of purpose. Ultimately what happens is at the end, Judge Brack gets some information about her that will cause some scandal, and being able to use that information as a way of manipulating her um, becomes the ultimate sort of um, entrapment that she suffers um, and ultimately then chooses a self-destructive path down which she goes. Hi, my name is Grace Cirillo. I am a junior and I'm going to be playing Berta in Hedda Gabler. Hi, my name is Diana Morales. I'm a junior and I'll be playing Mrs. Elfsted, aka Taya, in Hedda Gabler. <laughs> so the relationship between Berta and Miss Juliana is really interesting. Um, usually a maid and her employer aren't as close, but I've grown up sort of with Miss Juliana. So she's kind of family. She's all that I have, all I've ever known, her and George. It's hard to have to leave her to be able to work for Hedda now, but I think it's really special that I still have her in my life throughout the process, and now I sort of get to see George grow on his own with his new wife. 
I love the juxtaposition between Taya and Hedda because Taya does what Hedda is too scared to do. I believe that Taya is one of the most emancipated character in the play. She is free in a certain way um, because of her decisions and she has had the courage to pursue that fulfills her. Taya in a way is presented in this kind of misleading way. You think she's going to be mousy yet she's done all of this really really brave bold things like leaving her husband and, and finding her own intellect and, and embracing that where Hannah sits there and sees it and is jealous but is too scared to actually um, step into that and embrace that in the way that Taya does. So I would say that the women of the show, they seek to break away from this patriarchal society and repression in order to fulfill their own ideas and to be free in their imagination, in her, their creative process as a human being. Their society that they live in has shaped them so deeply that it's all they know. They're always trying to fit in, always trying to make sure that they're setting themselves up to be successful, to be wealthy, to be at a high profile so people respect them. They're both looking to be free and like to um, overcome this um, repression they're feeling. I think it's incredibly important to pay attention to the women and how they sort of adapt to the society around them, how they interact with those around them and truly how they end up taking power of their own goals and their own destinies. Hera is always trying to achieve this fulfillment in her life, but it's impossible inside this patriarchal society. You know, she does a lot of things that aren't likable, but she also says a lot of things that I think make her very likable. I feel that one of the core messages of this show is to not settle, to not settle for anything that you feel is less of what you deserve, of what you've wanted to accomplish. A line that Hedda says within the show is that one of the reasons that she married Tessman is because she's damned herself tired. It's never too late. It's never too late to pursue your dreams and pursue what you want and reach for the skies to not let society define who you are because at the end of the day you're never going to be happy if you're not actually doing and loving who you really want to. You're never going to be fulfilled if you don't find your own voice and you're able to come up with your own ideals and follow that goal set up for yourself, not for other people. To be able to really sort of coexist with each other and celebrate and have a wonderful, fulfilling life, we need to afford that ability to everybody. We can't create a society that says some people are allowed to fulfill themselves and exercise control over their own their lives or their destinies, while others cannot. Every voice deserves to be heard, and that we all have all of these different colors within just because you experience something that's really strong and maybe deemed as not good by society, we are all experiencing all of these different colors every day in life, and it doesn't make you a bad person. We have a responsibility to act and, and towards others in certain ways, of course, but every voice deserves to be heard. I think if I could say anything to Hedda, it would be that you're stronger than you think you are. The world isn't ready for you yet, but that doesn't mean you should give up. <laughs>